and also just to show you that there's really no code behind there in that page because we're still attempting our zero code deployment model. We've got no code in Web Form 2 either. We've got the same thing going on here, um, but this time we're using Russian. So we'll set that as the start page. Uh, launch it. And after initialization, we have we see that it's automatically localized this content. Uh, so you might be asking yourself, okay, now what did he do? Where was the magic there in that? There's we, we, we know that he's got some common custom .NET module filter going on in there, but that's not actually what's doing the magic. The magic is done using jQuery and this translate.js. Translate.js has uh, basically just a couple very, very simple functions within it. One called document.ready, which is a jQuery standard construct for the onload event. It basically allows you to nest multiple document.ready events so that you can actually have data processed after the page is loaded post page load. In this case I'm walking through and this is a DOM parser. Uh, jQuery is a very very powerful DOM parser and I'm going for each span tag where the where it has a class application of .t and for each of those I'm going out and I'm checking to see if this jdata object has been populated. Okay and the jdata object is actually is what's getting returned by this call to common services.ashx and if it has, then I set the inner HTML of that particular object to be the data in this class object called jdata. And let's look at common services to see what the function call. We know that the function is getting remapped based on what we looked at in the web config to call get localization data. Inside common services here, we'll go down to get localization data. If I can type straight. Okay, and we see that we pass in a couple parameters, the ISO language code and the resource namespace. And here's a little bit of the magic in this. Um, we could basically repattern this to look at something or other like an external EXE or another DLL that had embedded resources within it. And we could do it in this type of fashion if we wanted to. But for this case, I have everything embedded inside of the single web application. So I'm just going to grab the executing assembly, create a little resource manager, call the resource manager get set with the culture info that we've created from the language code. If the language code isn't supported, it'll automatically default into the catch block and create one for the localization for the uh, local language set, which is English. And we create an Ajax Pro JavaScript object serializer. I'm not going to go into really any details about this, but we've uh, included this little thing here called ajaxpro.json.dll, which is available on the Ajax Pro website. We move through each of the objects in using the enumerator. You'll notice that if you, when you create one of these uh, resource sets, that RS is going to appear to be null until you actually grab an enumerator and start moving through it and we're using a uh, JavaScript add uh, of the key, basically a string format, and then we're taking the data value and adding it as a JavaScript string to this class. So we've got a JavaScript object that we're adding all this data to, and then all we do is we're going to splat out to the screen var jdata equal to the response text. Um, if you're kind of curious as to what that might look like in the background, we can actually turn on Fiddler Debugger and then we can launch our application again and we can look at it in a little more detail here. So we'll go ahead and we'll, since we've uh, set Web Form 2 as our startup application, we'll watch it render. Okay, so all the magic is done and we're going to go ahead and look here. So we've got the call to Web Form 2. Uh, I looks like I don't have uh, I have NT authentication only turned on and not anonymous is why those two keys are there. But when it essentially gets back the the particular web page, you'll see that it's got the reference to the SVN and it's got the reference to the JavaScript here. Um, after this ASPX page is loaded, then it makes the call to get back the JavaScript, and the JavaScript is saying var jdata is equal to this JavaScript array, which has all the data contained in it. And, uh, oops, Notepad's not supporting their correct format. 
it doesn't realize that it's opening Unicode data. But anyway, here's the JData variable that got rendered to the uh, that which is which is what this code is basically using. I can again, I can go here and I can change this to disable caching and do reissue of the selected request, and we can look at that particular piece of JavaScript that we saw earlier. Okay, Fiddler is one of those nice, powerful tools for doing debugging like this that's very, very helpful. So you can see what's going on in the background. So we're creating our JData object, which is basically used by this translate document.ready and going through each span tag and parsing it out and adding the data from that resource array. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then we move on to our next sample, which is WebForm 3. I started thinking about my approach here, and one of the things that I wanted to do was to basically um, also add a support function, which was basically a lookup function. And the lookup function is basically this little piece of code here that, base, that goes out, and for any key that you might pass in, will return a text string of the data. So you can do this on, in um, JavaScript as well. You can essentially pull back data on the fly from this uh, uh, array element. See that in action. Okay, and then we displayed the Chinese value for that particular piece of text. And you'll notice that I was actually in the resource string here looking at the Chinese resource file. So nothing too exciting there. And then in the next example, expanding upon the basic concept a little bit more, we want to turn around and bring this form up in Russian. So in order to do that, I had to have some server-side code, which is basically breaking my zero-code rule. So we have static ISO language code here, and we notice that we had to add uh, a basic default value and then check on the post back to see if a query string parameter got passed called language and then we set that value to the, be the language code and then when this page renders it'll basically render out with the language code in here. Now I was like okay this is kind of the idea of, of what I want to be doing but it, it's actually not the the zero code that I'm hoping for. I'm actually hoping to make this thing automatically detect so I still need a, a little bit more logic uh, to be embellished here in order to try and get things a little bit cleaner. Sorry, I brought up Web Form 3 again. We want to Web Form 4. And we'll see that this basically works. Okay? Still, obviously, not the best approach, as I've noted on the page. Now, Web Form 5 was the next iteration. And what I did was I threw literal control thinking, okay, well, I'll just render out that particular include file of the JavaScript and do it in this kind of format where I have a basically drop the script tag for both of the translate.js and again for the, the resource management particular part of the process. Well, as you can already, you know, pr probably under, you know, realize that this is probably not the most efficient. I've introduced a new particular piece of, of uh, resource here, which is something or other that we wrote a while back, and, and excuse the heinous naming convention thereof, intel.language.language. Um, but it's essentially a deal, though, that we use um, into in order to do browser detection uh, first, and then cookie detection to determine what language is the selected language for this particular individual based on the domain of intel.com. That way we can bring app a localization to all of our internal apps for the ISN software network. And again, we've basically got this literal control where we rendered it out. And this, like I said, was not exactly the uh, the best operational approach that we wanted. The other little thing that we had here was we have this application actually detecting to see if we support this language or ISO code. And then from that, we're generating out the the supported code. Uh, that's if we we're going to use all internal resourcing. So uh, I don't know if I really want to get into it, but we can take a look at it. And it's basically doing a system con web configuration lookup to essentially see if this is actually supported language. Now we've got a basic 
section group here that's defined for the languages in the rewrite.net, which is also part of our URL rewriter. And inside of here we've got the default language. We've got some supported languages. And uh, essentially these are all the supported languages. When you're looking at it from an app-centric uh, point of view, if you're looking at it from a third-party uh, common services type of framework point of view where the third party hosting is having all the languages then then you have to kind of like make this little bit of a logical jump so in order to do that I'm going to go ahead and skip over running web form 5 because there's nothing really any different than web form 4 in terms of what we're doing and how we're rendering it uh, nothing at all exciting about this same thing using a post back uh, but in this case using a literal control to dump the things out. What I wanted to get to was this eventual evolution which was basically to um, after after doing that first that last one there I, I thought to myself okay we can move the language detection into this particular piece of the resource and if we have a contract with the localization team they're gonna have all the localizations made available to us in one place so we don't need to know anything about what language the user is working in or or we don't really we do, really don't care uh, so this particular page is the best of all those worlds it brings into account I do have a little tiny bit of code here because we're using domain cookies of .intel.com um, and I need to make sure that when my app is running here that it's not running as local host so I do a quick little redirect but I assure you this is not the normal code that you would have inside of a web page because normally you would be accessing it uh, in a not debug fashion. So ignoring this code for the moment we see that we just have the uh, common services which is going to do the detection in this type of pattern. Okay, And then we have our translate JavaScript and we just have code within our web page and there's, that's all there is to it. We'll go ahead and set that as the start page and we'll run it. Check out the end result. And voila, we have uh, obtained exactly what we're looking for. And here, I'm, if you look down on the lower line there of the status bar, you'll see JavaScript colon set lang and reload, which is basically a method that I added to the page um, so that you can set language codes. So you could use your own drop down and display the, uh, the languages. So if I set it to an invalid code, it just defaults back to English. And it's that simple. So basically we've made our zero code point. We have real, really no code within the web page. Um, all we're using is native .NET controls. I guess there's one other thing that I just thought about is the rendering of the label control. Just so I can show you that these things render as span tags. Okay. And since I named the span tags, the name is the same name as what's the inner resource is, I'm able to do that replacement. You can see the class equal to T. So it goes span.t and then it sets the inner HTML to be that. And it's doing it all client side, so if we were actually to view the source of this page, we'll see that it's in English because again it's running running on the client and not from the server. So we've uh, achieved our end all goal of zero code. Now we just have to get uh, adoption by the localization team and we're going to be in business in deploying uh, localization resources in this fashion forever ever more. Uh, not a bad solution I think. Uh, let me think, is there any last little bit that I would want to add into that? Our DLL is kind of pri pri proprietary but the code is available um, and this approach and this sample can be made available no problem. And that's all I can think of. Thanks for joining me. Bye.